Welcome back to Real Talk About Feminism, our cozy, cozy episode. Today, we're talking about some iconic feminist moments in history. Yep. Mostly from this decade. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just some fun little like pop culture stuff, some like female empowerment, girl power. Um, yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, super fun. Today is a rainy day. And that's why we're going cozy. And so just, you know, snuggle up, listen to this episode with us. Yeah, get your drinkity drink and put your slippers on and just have a fun little rainy, cozy vibe with us. Let's do our obsessions. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's do it. So my obsession is, I feel like I kind of talked about this last episode when you were like, I just love my life right now. Mm -hmm. But I was looking at my vision board and I was like, things were coming true on my vision board. Like places Mm -hmm. that I'm traveling to this year, um, financial abundance, like things that are just going my way and I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. No, I'm obsessed with that. Honestly, yeah, I was looking at my vision board the other day too and I was like, so much of that is happening. Like, oh, for example, because I also have my, all of the pictures I put on my vision board, I have on like a little rotating um, widget. That's a cute idea. Yeah, so so like I have it all here I'm on, on this widget oh my from gosh. my Pinterest board. And so I had just taken a picture of my vlogging camera when I was on the plane. And then I scrolled over and on my phone, a picture of a vlogging camera with sunglasses from my vision board up there came up. And I was like, I literally just took the same picture and crazy. I didn't even know. So, yeah, I love that. Just the way that everything has manifested and is continually being manifested Mm -hmm. it's a good feeling it is a good feeling yeah good things are happening well I love that um my obsession is tiny little g I have been kind of traveling a lot recently and I've just been missing him and he's just such a lovey little boy yes that was literally your obsession like four episodes ago oh seriously (laughs) But it's fine. I'm you, like you love him. I'm not very diverse with my obsessions. Um I'll put more effort into it next time. <laughs> no, but like I I am like I'm just absolutely obsessed I know, with I him. I am too, honestly. He's been so sweet. Oh, you know what? No, I have a different one. Um my obsession are these two giant snake plants that are in my room now. Um so Kendrick, my boyfriend, as I previously announced, um he just moved across the country so like we're doing long distance and he couldn't take two of his plants and they're huge I want them. they're like this tall from the ground and so I have two and I'm taking care of them while he's gone um but yeah they're really pretty very pretty you know I love snake plants mm-hmm. so you know if you ever run out of room <laughs> yeah <next> door. <laughs> well I feel like they're like because I feel like I had an awkward number of plants and it was like not just like filling up the space, but now I'm like, okay, that's filling it up. That's full with three plants up there. Like mm-hmm. it's all coming together. So that's my obsession. I do like them. They're very nice. Thank you. So today's feminist highlight is Tanya Tetlow. She's the first female and lay person to be president of Fordham University. And for those who didn't know what a lay person is like me, common person no so it's an unordained member of a church oh so fordham university is a prominent jesuit university in the u.s and jesuit is catholic Catholic, yeah um and it's always been led by a priest so tanya she's a former law professor and um the president of loyola university new orleans which is also a jesuit school since 2018 before becoming president at fordham she was also the first female and layperson president at Loyola. So Tanya is just making history. Not only is she not a priest, but she's – can women be priests? I don't think so. I don't think so. So not only is she the opposite of a layperson, um, she's also a female. Yeah. So history twofold. I love that. Thank you, Tanya, for – your contribution towards Catholic gender equality. <laughs> really had to find your words there. Um, that is cool, though. Um, interesting to – it would be interesting to, like, dive deeper into it and see, like, can women be priests? Like, yeah, because this is also – we've talked about this, but, like, growing up in a strict religion, yeah, you, you, you don't learn about other religions. No. So, 
So yeah, we don't know. Educate us. But um, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, I think we're just kind of diving right yeah, in. Let's get into it. So um, yeah, we have some like fun little feminist pop culture moments. This first one is actually something we've touched on. Um, so in on April fifth of nineteen ninety six. Bikini Kill released their final album, Reject All American, and that ended the seven-year run that introduced the Riot Girl movement to the world. We did an episode on the Riot Girl movement. We did. A while ago. We should revisit it, that. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It was a really fun episode to do, and Bikini Kill is a band, mm-hmm. part of the Riot Girl movement. Yeah. That was a, yeah, that was such an interesting topic, and that's a big thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so cool. In 1997, J.K. Rowling published Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which is the first book, and that book introduced readers to Hermione Granger, one of the characters, I'm sure everybody knows, but she was the brightest witch of her age, and by releasing this, she taught a generation of girls that it's cool to be smart. Yay! Um, Yeah, Hermione, she is honestly a slay female role model. She literally and used also, to be my role model as a kid. Aw. Remember when I was You with the time Halloween? turner. Yeah. Um, on top of that, she also was, like, with, like, Harry and Ron, like, two guys, like, mm-hmm. two guy wizards. And so, like, that was cool. She's, yeah. like, representing. Right. And also, side note, Emma Watson is just oh, a yeah. very cool person. Yeah, yeah, in general, she's also a feminist, so yeah. that's cool. Um. Okay. So in 2005, March 27th, Shonda Rhimes, her show Grey's Anatomy premiered on ABC and it kicked off her path to world domination. So I didn't actually know that she did Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Um, Shonda Land? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought um, I had only like really heard about her from Bridgerton, but now that I know the name, I'm like discovering all these things. But okay. So her. her whole empire grew to include private practice, scandal, and how to get away with murder. And she also became known for casting people of color and airing storylines that tackle abortion, racism, and LGBTQ plus rights. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yep. And she, which I think is like her most popular, one of her most popular is Bridgerton, obviously. Yeah. Which is part of Shondaland. But um, she has really made a name for herself and I think really changed a lot of things about the industry because... There are so many, I think I, you've never seen Grey's Anatomy, but I remember well, one of my favorite Grey's Anatomy episodes, and I told you about this, was a oh. Survivor of Sexual Assault, mm-hmm. and it was so powerful how they depicted it, because when she came out of the room, like, all the female nurses and doctors were just lining the way for her, and I'm like, that is the kind of stuff that is super important to show. Yeah. And so, I think it's really great. Yeah, I think, um, like, in her shows and stuff, like, even in Bridgerton, like, they have mm-hmm. gay characters, totally. and and so I think she does, Who's like, gay in um, I don't want to ruin anything, but, you know, the, um, like, at the brothel. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but I think that she does a good job showcasing diverse situations scenarios and people mm-hmm. even if it wasn't like accepted at the time like in Bridgerton yeah, like you know historically accurate yeah like you know she's showing like yeah these things still happened even if it was like taboo or not allowed like all this stuff is still going on and it's important to have that representation so yeah I love that I think that's cool also isn't it crazy that Grey's has been going on since 2005? Yeah. I that's was thinking. insane. That is insane. That's a long time. That's a long time. At some point. I know. I know. I, I think I stopped watching it like season 16 or 17, the COVID season. Mm-hmm. And um, my friend has continued to watch. And so <laughs> a few weeks ago, she was like updating me. I'm like, so what about this character? What are they doing? And she was giving me all the updates so I don't even have to watch now. She's taking one for the team. <laughs> she is. Because, yeah, like, she you still want to know. so much time. <laughs> yeah. I wonder when they're going to end it. I think the last season is coming up. Oh, the okay. Next one. Okay. Finally. It's a lot. I know. It's a lot of, like, dedication I to the know. role. <laughs> like, how do you not just, like, slowly morph into the role that you're playing? <laughs> oh, no, it's crazy. <laughs> um, ooh, what was that? <laughs> um, um, um. So, in 2014, Beyonce performed in front of a giant sign that just said feminist in neon letters, 
at the 2014 MTV Video Music Awards. And this was very iconic. And I think Beyonce stands for feminism in general. Yeah. But, like, literally her performing in front of the word is Mm -hmm. really iconic. Yeah, like, you can't miss the statement. It's not hidden or underlying. Yeah, and, like, she's done, obviously, like, a lot in general, I think, for feminism. But, like, um, I mean, just the song, like, Run the World, you know? Like, that's huge. And also, like, you know, she has, like, a lot of power bringing in, like, um, a lot of different perspectives and different audiences, I think. And so, yeah, I love that. She's definitely an icon for, like, black feminism and black women. And I think that's really important because she just, she's iconic. She is. She is in so many ways. So, like, literally before we were even born. So. (laughs) Right. No, exactly. I think that's so cool. Um, in 2017, the day after Donald Trump's inauguration, Women's March protesters took to the streets of Washington, D.C. and around the world, and they marched. They stood up for women's rights, racial equality, LGBTQ rights, immigration reform, health care reform, reproductive rights, everything under the sun. Um, and this event became the largest single-day protest in American history. I think because Donald Trump stands for everything opposite of that and what we believe in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so powerful for all of those women. I wish I could have been there, Mm -hmm. but all of those women to stand together. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I think in general, like marches and stuff are like powerful, but especially having someone elected into office to like lead our country who had so many accusations against him and like, all of these women like coming and he's out. Now been charged. Yeah, like, like all of this stuff, like not a good person. And so like I'm sure the emotions were super high like at that march, but like just for them to be able to stand together, that's really brave and really admirable. I agree. Very powerful moment. So another one, October 15th of 2017. This is when hashtag me too went viral. And so people were sharing their stories of sexual harassment and sexual assault. And um, so this was provoked by the New York Times article in The New Yorker exposing Harvey Weinstein. So three months after this whole situation, uh, some women in Hollywood united to form the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund, which was dedicated to fighting the, quote, systemic inequality and injustice in the workplace that have kept underrepresented underrepresented groups from reaching their full potential. So that's a lot, but that's obviously like really powerful. I think anytime you can get, unfortunately, but anytime you can get like a celebrity, like to endorse something and like really stand for a cause, like that gets momentum. And so I think it's cool that they were able to create a fund for the women who are underrepresented. I do too. And I remember when, hashtag me too went viral it was insane because it took over everything Mm -hmm. and it was time that it did like this has been going on in the industry in hollywood for the beginning of time right since Uh it was created and i think it's really great that those women were vulnerable and felt empowered to share their stories because it helped so many other women Mm -hmm. And it brought so much awareness to sexual harassment, sexual assault, Mm -hmm. and it wasn't spoken about enough before. No, it wasn't. And And it still isn't now, but it's better. I think, yeah, I think it's way better. Um, I think it, like, goes to show, like, educating yourself on topics, even if they don't necessarily directly affect you, like, supporting other people in their struggles and what they're going through is really important. I remember when Me Too was going viral, um, like reading these things and being like, oh my gosh, like, I can't imagine those things happening to me. Flash forward. (laughs) That's kind of sad, but like, and not saying that something bad is going to happen to you if it hasn't, but like, um, I don't know. I just think it's important to like really give people the space to share their stories even if you can't relate, like, and I think that's um, a big issue in our society now is like sometimes a lot of people with really extreme beliefs on either side are like, oh, it doesn't affect me or it doesn't, I haven't experienced it. So I can't understand. I'm thinking a lot specifically with like LGBTQ plus rights and everything. But like, just because you 
haven't experienced something doesn't mean that it isn't affecting people. So me too, like that was so important. Like I think that was a big lesson learned that from was that monumental, movement. For sure. Yeah. For sure. We're going to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor, BetterHelp. It's 2023 and it's time to really prioritize our mental health this year. No matter where you are in life, everyone can benefit from therapy. Whether you need to work through trauma or just need a safe person to talk to, BetterHelp is here for you. BetterHelp is the world's largest online therapy service. Get matched with a professional licensed therapist in your state who you can trust. BetterHelp has options to communicate with your therapist via chat, email, or video, and you can message them at any time to get help. BetterHelp is giving our listeners 10% off if you sign up using the link in our show notes. If you're struggling with depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, grief, or just need someone to talk to, try BetterHelp today by clicking the link in our show notes or go to betterhelp.com slash rtafpod to get 10% off today. We're going to talk about Rihanna next. So, Oh, no, no. <laughs> I think she is just a feminist icon in general. Icon, icon. Um, but I specifically want to talk about some of her shirts that she's worn over the years um, that have portrayed, like, female empowerment and women and girls supporting girls so the new york city um women's march 2017 Mm -hmm. she protested in front of trump tower she was wearing a pink sweatshirt that said this pussy grabs back (gasps) oh love and then she's also worn other shirts that say we should all be feminists she also wore a shirt that said sluts and she also um this was in 2013 um like when she was like associated with chris brown Mm. but um she wore a t-shirt that said diy and then it had a picture of a woman touching herself wow yeah if you don't know what it looks like google it because it's not like pornographic Uh but it's very like female pleasure female empowerment yeah so like she was making a statement and that was in 2013 that was 10 years ago wow i think another thing um just like with um her like fashion style in general like um, her really showcasing her pregnancies yes. with her outfits and like decorating around her bump. I feel like that was so like strong woman, like female empowerment, just like embracing the strength of motherhood no, literally. and highlighting it. So I think that's really cool too. I do too. And like when she performed at the Super oh Bowl my gosh, she was yeah. pregnant, come on girl, that was so iconic. Yeah, no, that was iconic. I love that because remember, she didn't, we didn't know she was pregnant. Mm -mm. So everyone was like, is she, is she, we don't want to assume. Yeah, like is she, is she postpartum or like is this, no, like that's iconic. Literally like the biggest stage in the world, I feel like. And she slayed. She really did. Um, uh, some other things, Rihanna, um, so her music video, the song, bitch better have my money. Um, it shows that women can also like be the boss too. And I was reading about it and it was like basically a play on, um, like she had been really scammed by someone. And so she was basically like clapping back and being like, no, like you can't mess with me. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the messages in her songs and in her music videos are about women empowerment. Like you Mm -hmm. can be a boss too. Yeah. It's not just, it's not a man's world. Like, mm-hmm. women can rise up, too. Yeah. Um, I think this was very iconic of Billie Eilish, but her song and her short film, Not My Responsibility, um, where she showed, and we all know this, but, like, she is iconic for wearing baggy clothes because she's just constantly been body shamed her entire music career. And so in Not My Responsibility, she is wearing her iconic baggy clothes And then she slowly starts taking them off and she's wearing like tighter revealing clothes underneath. And in the short film, and we saw this in concert too, Yeah. but the song, or it's it's more like a voiceover, but like that is in the back and it's just talking about the double standards between men and women. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really, really iconic. Right. And like, she's talking about how her dressing a certain way, that doesn't mean she's responsible for other people sexualizing her and having dirty gross thoughts about her like that she what she's wearing shouldn't be dictated by the nasty thoughts of other people you know and like she she did she was body shamed a lot and sexualized and And so she was a minor yeah and so she covered up and was wearing super baggy stuff and nothing wrong with that but like the reason why she did it is sad and so for her to come out with this statement like how it's not her responsibility 
to, you know, own the the way people are thinking about her when she's just dressing how she wants to dress. Like, yep. it's not her responsibility. It's not on her. That was iconic in concert. That was so good. Was so I know. Because cool. at the end, and she's like, not my responsibility. So like, good. what? Yeah, it's good. Another iconic feminist moment was Lady Gaga's 2016 Oscar performance. And she performed live. She was playing the piano. She performed Till It Happens to You. Because she's been very vocal and open about her personal sexual assaults and sexual harassment that she's gone through. And so this song was written for a documentary that was showcasing sexual assault in college campuses in America. So she performed this song live. And then um, during the performance, like towards the end, a ton of survivors that were in the documentary came on stage and they were all holding hands. They got a standing ovation. People in the audience were crying. It was super powerful. And she has an amazing voice. And so Mm -hmm. you could feel the emotion during the performance. And I think it was really um, monumental, powerful to perform that live. Yeah. Also like, well, props to her for using her platform and, and uh, being vocal about her story. Cause that's hard. And then also giving a voice to other survivors and props to those survivors for like coming out there. Cause that's all triggering, you know, like yeah. even if it's like an empowerment thing, like you're still thinking about what happened. So that's really amazing. Yeah. Another one, absolutely iconic. Um, Taylor Swift re-recording our albums so that they're under her name and Scooter Braun isn't getting like the royalties from it or whatever. Um, so obviously that's a huge feminist move and and she's a feminist in general and you know stands for female empowerment and has faced a ton of backlash but she's a baddie and honestly her re-recording and stuff like that's a lot of work but that's amazing that now she owns her own music you know I agree and people can say what they want about Taylor Swift I know recently she's kind of been under fire and I'm disappointed oh yeah true um throughout her career like she has made a name for herself and she has clapped back against people who have just wanted to watch her downfall like she has just continued to make music and stand up for herself and um speak now taylor's version should be coming out soon so i'm very excited um but i think that's a really iconic feminist move yeah in a very tough industry definitely um, let's talk about Nicki Minaj's song and music video, Anaconda, Cultural Reset. Um, I remember when this came out. And so in the video, the song um has many sexual innuendos in general, but the music video, she specifically got curvy women to depict that like you can still be a attractive, sexy, beautiful woman and not be stick skinny. Mm -hmm. Like, is usually represented in the media. Yeah. And um, that was very iconic of her to do because it's very underrepresented. Oh, yeah. Um, And I think also, in general, like, hip-hop has traditionally just hyper-sexualized women. Mm -hmm. And women are just seen as objects. And male rappers are very crude sometimes in the way that they view women in the songs. Mm -hmm. And I think female rappers like Nicki, Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B, like, they are totally changing the narrative from women being seen as objects in hip hop to being the subject of hip hop. Yeah. And I think that another cultural reset, I think was when Cardi B and Megan came out with WAP. Yeah. That was a cultural reset. And that is kind of along the same lines of Anaconda. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that they're um, like songs like Anaconda and WAP, like really pioneered um, almost like, okay. Like, we all know, like, male rappers, like, are super vulgar about women and will say stuff that's on the same level as, like, these female rappers, but no one's being like, uh, that's so dirty. Are you kidding me? They, like, just said that outright. Mm -hmm. No one's saying that about the guys, but everyone's saying it about the women. So, like, um, power to them for speaking out about that, you know? And, like, they've made statements and stuff, Um, but I think that's really cool. Yeah. So our last one for you guys, um, Meghan Markle rewriting the narrative in her interview with Oprah and her husband, Prince Harry. H. H. Um, oh my gosh, I need to finish that. You still have No. Um, have you seen all the stuff in the news recently, though, about them? 
saw something. They were, like, in a crash be- oh, with, yeah. like, paparazzi or something. And yeah. I don't know. Um, I didn't follow that. To be honest, they're making headlines a bit too much recently. I'm like, just, if, if you wanted to chill in the California countryside, like you said in Oprah, then do that. But did they want that headline? Who knows? Well, also, I she got kicked off her Spotify deal or something. What? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll we'll take it from her if if that's out on the table, the Spotify podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, so her just like taking back the narrative and speaking out against the royal family, like that's a big deal. Um, so that was like very iconic, and other people have kind of followed. Yeah, well, going back to Meghan Markle, like for one, she's the first person of color in the royal family, so yeah. that's already a first layer. But then her speaking out about like how bad her mental health was while living with the royal family and being in that environment and being in her like duchess era like that was so bad for her and she changed the narrative from like oh you're just quitting Mm -hmm. to like I'm taking care of my mental health right and also like kind of shedding light on like it's not all that glamorous like I mean okay there's privilege obviously there not for her though because she's a woman of color um and stepping into this environment that is completely built upon white privilege Mm -hmm. um that's really hard so so for her to you know remove her kids from that environment and for her husband to stand by her like that's a huge thing I know I was gonna say like Prince Harry literally saying to his family like we are leaving yeah. Because of the treatment that we face here and him standing by his family. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so powerful. Yeah. Um, also, like, Simone Biles, Naomi Osaka, both Olympians who have also changed this narrative of you're just a quitter to I'm taking care of my mental health. Mm-hmm. So it's all very iconic and very much needed. Yeah. So those were some, you know, a little blast through the past feminist iconic moments in the last you know 20 years um but I think it's fun to like recognize these things and just like remember because these things take courage for people to do unfortunately it's not especially when you're so public right like it's not just gonna be like all 100% supported so that you know these people are facing like have faced backlash and all that stuff but their iconic moments because they stood for what they believed in and for the right cause. Yep. Well, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Everything is in the show notes. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.